Good morning, everyone. This is Father Adam Westfall, pastor of Holy Spirit Parish in Creston and St. Edward's Parish in Afton. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning, either on YouTube or on KSIB Radio. Thanks to everyone at KSIB Radio for making the broadcast of this Mass possible. Good morning and welcome to Holy Spirit Parish. Today's Mass intention is for the people. Our opening song will be number 465, Canticle of the Sun, number 465. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And brothers and sisters, as we gather this weekend to worship our God, let's ask that he purify our hearts to make us worthy to stand in his presence. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, 
Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will give you evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear all of these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Of what great nation has statutes and decrees that are just that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? 
He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person. But the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. So there's a bit of a caveat uh, with this homily that I'm giving this weekend. I had prepared something um, talking about the divide between Protestants and Catholics on tradition. And we have in the scriptures um, Jesus condemning seemingly uh, tradition. Uh, We have in the gospel today that uh, seeming condemnation. That's what I prepared the homily for. However, as I was sitting in the confessional just before Mass, I felt the Lord say, talk about something else. And so I'm going to. So this has had all of 15 minutes worth of preparation uh, before the Mass this evening, but holy, uh, hopefully it has inspiration behind it. If it's a little unpolished, please forgive me. I had the opportunity this past week of meeting via Zoom with a number of my household brothers, our household uh, from undergrad. It's kind of like a fraternity, except um, you know, it's, it's, we call them households. They were very much oriented towards spiritual things. Uh, we'd pray together, we'd get to Mass together, so on and so forth. Uh, And this one household brother, at one point in time, he really challenged me to live better my faith. I had woken up one Sunday morning and decided that today was a day that I did not want to go to Mass. I just didn't feel like it. And so I went throughout the day, you know, basically being lazy, not getting out of my pajamas until afternoon. Uh, And then when I went over to dinner uh, at the the refectory there, the, the cafeteria, I was talking to him, and he asked me, where'd you go to Mass today? And I was like, ah, I didn't. I decided I didn't want to go today. And he kind of looks at me with the sheepish grin, and he says, you know, I'm pretty sure that's a mortal sin, uh, choosing not to go to Mass on Sundays. And I was like, really? I was seriously stunned. I had no idea the seriousness that we as Catholics place on attending weekly Mass. And he says to me, don't worry, I, uh, there's another Mass. There's a last chance Mass. It's at 7 p.m., Um, and I can find somebody to give you a ride because I didn't have a functioning uh, vehicle at the time, and he did. And so I went to Mass, and it was, I'm really glad I did. It was a good experience, Uh, and something happened to me at that moment. I I don't think I missed a Sunday Mass since then, 20-some years, and so I was recounting this story to him just the other evening when we were um, talking on Zoom. He really had an opportunity to challenge me uh, to grow in my faith that one evening when he encouraged me so simply just to go to Mass. Uh, We teach, you know, in the Catholic Church that we should go to Mass every Sunday, that we should dedicate uh, at least a portion of our day on Sunday to worshiping the Lord. It's incredibly important. It's a commandment. It goes back thousands of years to keeping uh, this day of worship uh, for our God. And God is there working with us to help us to overcome any of the temptations that we have for missing Mass. One of them, the one that I was operating under at the time, was that God understands if I don't want to go today. God understands if I don't want to attend Mass. He understands. And as I wrestled with it over the years, you know, making myself kind of as this discipline, go every weekend, I realized God does understand when our hearts are not oriented wholly to him uh, to be able, you know, he, when we're, we're not, you know, wholly um, committed to going to Mass, you know, into this training, he understands intimately. Uh, later, this, uh, later on, uh, after Mass, we're going to have a little talk from um, our friend out there who is selling his wares from the Holy Land, uh, Salmon, uh, and 
he's going to tell us about, you know, the, the, the different sites in the Holy Land or, or whatever about his wares and, and how it supports the Holy Land. Uh, I've been to the Holy Land. Uh, I've been to uh, the sites that um, he, he comes from Nazareth. I've been there as well. There's this one church in the Holy Land that overlooks the Dome of the Rock. The church is called Dominus Flavit. It's the place where Jesus wept. He wept over Jerusalem because they resisted him so much uh, when he was trying to gather them together like a hen gathers her chicks. It's, uh, he understands intimately the human heart and how hard it is for us to train ourselves to be open to God's grace, to be allowed to be open to God's grace. He understands. He knows the depths of the human heart, and he's wept over humanity, especially when it's turning away from him. We, in the depths of our hearts, and I do this, you know, I still have this in the depths of my heart, the temptation to always choose the bad over the good, or something that's not as good as the greatest good. Uh, for instance, um, this isn't scandalous, so I, I don't have a problem sharing this with you and having it recorded and broadcast out to all the world. Uh, as many of you have noticed, I've committed myself over the last like year and a half to exercising, to eating right, and to de just being healthy uh, with my life. However, I am still tempted often as I'm driving by that Dairy Queen sign. I am so tempted to stop and get like six blizzards, you know, one of each flavor that I've been cutting out for the last year and a half. Uh, and I don't always say no to that temptation. I don't get six, but you know, I go and it's, it's a wonderful little delight. But uh, inevitably, if I go into that, you know, it's like the first time that I have that fall where I say, okay, I'm going to do it. Inevitably, it winds up being every day for lunch that I'm doing that, you know, and all of a sudden I step on the scale and I realize, dang it, there goes my diet from the last three weeks. You know, I've totally lost it because I had that one little fall. And the same thing happens when we start to choose not to go to Mass. If we make that choice, it becomes easier to make that choice in the future. And all of a sudden, man, it's been six months since I've been to Mass. You know, it's that same kind of temptation uh, that enters into our heart. I heard a story once of somebody who was trying to quit smoking. And the way they did it is they set a single cigarette on the table. And they said, I'm not going to have that one cigarette. That was all they gave up. They gave up that one cigarette. But they gave it up every day, gave it up every, every, you know, every time they walked by, nope, I'm giving up that one cigarette. What happened is they broke their addiction because they never took up that one, which it would have led to so many more, which would have led to the, the ones afterwards. That's how our human heart works. We, once, we, once we kind of let in, um, let in that temptation, it grows in our hearts and it bears something, um, you know, it, it becomes way out of our control very soon. There's an analogy to letting a camel get its nose under a tent uh, and if you don't immediately, you know, smack the camel on the nose to get it to move, move its head, all of a sudden it's sticking its whole body under and flipping the whole tent over. Uh, it's the same kind of way with our temptation. We have to develop as Christians that discipline to continually open our hearts to God at all times. We say the bare minimum is going to Sunday Mass and making sure that we're open one day a week to encountering the Lord in whatever way uh, that we're able to come and worship. It's kind of fallen off in the Catholic Church, this devotion to Sunday liturgy. It's fallen off in the last 20 or 30 years. And it's really sad. We can see the effects in our society of people not opening up their hearts and going to Mass. I'm not saying this in a judging way for anyone who's missed Mass on a Sunday. I'm just saying this is a formation in our heart that needs to happen. If we really want to attain the good things of God, uh, we need to be able to you know, discipline ourselves uh, kind of like we're training to be athletes, so we're on a healthy diet, or we're trying to give up sin in the world, keeping ourselves undefiled, as the gospel, sa uh, as, the, as the readings um, say, the second reading says we're supposed to keep ourselves um, undefiled, free from the cares of this world. You know, if we're going to do it, we have to develop that discipline. Uh, there's a video going around Facebook at the moment, and it's grotesque, it's gruesome. I wouldn't recommend going out and searching it. Somebody sent it to me, and I watched it, and I was just in awe. Right now, in Afghanistan, the members of the Christian church are being martyred, and there's people taking videos of it and putting it up on Facebook. They're being given the choice, you know, deny Christ or be killed, and you can watch them being killed graphically. They're being martyred. And I was, uh, you know, kind of had this inspiration as I was coming before the altar of God, where I saw those that I saw just die. I just saw them die. 
I saw them rejoicing around the throne of heaven, happy, you know, because they're now saints. They're now standing before the throne of God, worshiping him because they gave all. They gave everything. There was no excuse that stood in the way of their belief in God. There was nothing that stood in their way, and there's nothing that stood between them and the love of God. How profound that is. We, in, in America, we have it pretty easy uh, in, in terms of belief and faith. There's kind of a creeping secularism that's eroding a commitment to God. Uh, but on the other hand, we have it fairly easy. We can make that choice uh, to come to Mass, and there's usually no uh, external consequence. There's usually no um, negative thing. The only thing we have to do is we have to overcome our own will. We have to make that commitment. We have to continually choose uh, to not live the easy life, but to live the disciplined life to come and worship the living God. If we do, we experience the fruits of faith. We experience that depth of belief, and we're strengthening ourselves for, God forbid, that moment when we'd ever have to make that same decision where we're saying, you know, I value my belief in God more than I do my very life. Uh, if we make that discipline, that choice now, and train ourselves in that discipline, we're going to be training ourselves for so much more in the future. Now, I realize it might be somewhat ironic talking about um, the necessity of mass attendance, especially since we just got through a time when mass was basically closed for a year and a half. There are exceptions to the obligation to come to Sunday mass. For those who are physically not able to make it, that's a, a very valid exception, and, and they're not obliged to come to church. But even those who are infirm still have some obligation on Sunday to offer up some prayers, to do something spiritual, to worship in some way. Even those who cannot physically make it to Mass have the obligation of worshiping God. There's, that is a divine commandment that cannot be dispensed. We have in our hearts, as long as we have the capacity to make the choice, we have to choose the good, the best good, um, the highest good, which is worship of God on Sundays. Um, you know, this is something that has motivated believers from Jews to Catholics all through the centuries, this idea that one day a week is holy. We don't touch it. We leave it for God. We leave it to, so that we can worship. Um, Jesus tells us, indeed, the Sabbath was made for the man, not man for the Sabbath. We need this Sabbath. We need Sunday worship. There's something in our hearts that craves it. There's something in our hearts that responds to it. There's something in our hearts that dies when we don't have it. And so we have this Sunday worship. We give ourselves over to that formation, and we move forward in the light of faith and the light of grace, growing day by day um, closer to the true vine, Jesus Christ. As we go forward, let's pray for our community then. Let's rediscover the value of Sunday Mass. Let's rediscover the beauty of our faith in this, daily lit in this, in this weekly liturgy that forms us, that transforms us, that keeps us oriented towards the only true God, God alone. And if you've had the, um, you know, if, you, if you've fallen in your choices, God's mercy is, is wonderful. It's a wonderful gift of God to be able to forgive even um, the weakest of the human hearts. You know, even, even, even the most heinous of sins, God can forgive through his mercy. Um, but let's not presume God's mercy. Let's make that commitment to always choose the good, the highest good, that we may experience the fruits of heaven. We may be celebrating with those saints that were just made this past week that we may be celebrating um, the, the wondrous feast in the kingdom of heaven, having been disciplined so long uh, that we love nothing but God alone. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, 
was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people of faith, let us humbly come before our God and present to him our needs. That the church grow in unity and remember Christ's call to love and serve one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Hear our prayer. Make our world a safe place protect our world from terrorism, and may God save all citizens whose lives are in intimate danger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in civil authority will dedicate themselves to justice, peace, authentic freedom, and the generous defense of the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unemployed and all who are in financial difficulty, that they will find help and opportunities to improve their life situation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For stu students returning to school, that they always be filled with the excitement of learning, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who gather at this table, may our faith take us through difficult times, and may God always be our anchor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. year to our prayers we ask O Lord and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you through Christ our Lord Amen. as we present our gifts to the Lord let us join together in singing number 433 come to the water Thank you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image, and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, as with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of Lord until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you who are unable to join us in person to receive the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you to make a spiritual communion with us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, at least come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 
Please join us in singing our communion hymn, number 395, The Supper of the Lord, number 395.
Let us pray. (laughs) Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor through Christ our Lord. This time I'd like to invite Mr. Salmon up to give a presentation on the the Holy Land Olivewood uh, religious articles that he has. If you'd like to be seated, you may do so. You may be, yeah, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is Salman. I'm from Nazareth. Uh, I'm here today to talk about our mission. Our mission is recommended by the Archbishop of Jerusalem. He has written asking for your help on behalf of the Christians in the Holy Land. Do you know that Catholics and the Christians once made up 63% of the people in the Holy Land? Now they are less than 2% of the whole, whole population. Holy Land Catholics are known worldwide for their olive wood carvings generation after generation. Families have taught their, their children to carve religious figures from, from olive wood by hand. For two centuries, Catholics have been able to support their families by sending this unique carving to the Grammo visit. We brought, we brought this carving to the United States as part of this mission. Selling this whole unique art has helped Catholics make a living there. The Archbishop of Jerusalem is asking you to consider buying this atom to continue the ink continue the income for local Christians and Catholics to support their families and their residents in the Holy Land. Thank you for your time and session today. We accept cash, checks, and all the credit cards. Thank you. Thank you, Father. The Holy Land, the Christians, they rely heavily on our support, especially the support of tourism. And with the COVID-19 pandemic, that's gone through the basement. I mean, that's just, it's tanked completely, tourism. And so if you wish to uh, support the Holy Land, you can do so a number of ways. One would be through uh, supporting Mr. Salmon and his uh, initiative that he has here. So the religious articles will be available after mass uh, this weekend uh, for you to look over and purchase any of the Holy Wood, uh, the Olive Wood uh, Holy Land religious articles that you may like. Um, the other announcement is uh, we are doing our signups for 40 hours of adoration. We're down. We need 14 more people to sign up. We're getting down to the end there. It's going to run um, the, the September 12th through 14th over at St. Edwards. The sign up is in the back on your left as you head out of mass. Uh, thank you for supporting that initiative. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. 